All right. Welcome back. We're in Lightroom Classic today, and this is Lightroom to Photoshop. And today we're going to take a look at a little more fun aspect of the program, and that is actually editing or adjusting the images. I call it toning. <laughs> Notice that we are in the library module. The library module is a browser. And then we're gonna slip on over here to develop. So I will click develop and boom, this changes. Don't worry about this side at this point today. Now we have all these adjustments that we can do to an image. What's important to know is Lightroom Classic Develop Module and Adobe Camera Raw are both what we call raw converters. So if we're shooting a raw format, and in this case, this is a raw file, a raw file is just an image capture. Nothing's applied to it. When you take a JPEG, the camera is actually processing the image. When you take a raw file, it's just taking the capture, and then we're going to process it in these raw converters. Now they look like photo editors. It looks like basically the same thing as Photoshop, but Photoshop could not work on this photo in its current state. It needs to convert it. So if you were to drop this image into Photoshop, it would throw you into Adobe Camera Raw first because it would need to be converted. Now, some people just click OK at this point. Please do not click OK. This is a wonderful program. You can do amazing things inside raw conversion programs. And the main one that you should pay attention to is setting your white balance. I don't actually set my white balance on my camera anymore because I can control it here in the con raw conversion program and it's way better. I can use it to get my color balance more exact on how I wanna see it. So the first thing we need to take a look at is what's going on, what's everything up here in this program. The first thing that we have here is our histogram. Our histogram just shows us where the data is in our image. Each image is gonna be different because it's different. Histogram is gonna look different. You traditionally don't want all your data over this way or all your data over this way because that would say that, hey, this is a well-exposed image. If you have an image with a lot of dark in it, so if we went to this image or this image, you're gonna see a lot of data over here. Well, why? Well, because everything's very, very, very dark. If we had an image with a lot of white, we would see a lot of data over here. So just because the histogram doesn't look right doesn't mean it's wrong. It just is showing you once again where the data is in your image. So let's go ahead and click back on this. We also have some highlight alerts. You can click on these and it gets this little white box around each side. You can see right here it's saying I've blown out this area, meaning I've lost my whites. If I make something too dark, it starts to show up as blue. So it's saying, hey, you've made this too dark. I don't find this very helpful. You have to really go to the extremes to see it. So we're gonna turn that off because it drives me nuts and I don't wanna look at it. Down here we have some options. This little symbol right here is just this basic box. So if you wanna get back to this basic box, you would click on this symbol. Right here we have our crop tool, our healing tool, our red eye reduction tool, and our selective adjustments tool. Now, when you're editing photos, and this has to do with any program in the world that you would ever use, there's two different ways in which you edit an image globally and selectively. Globally means you make an adjustment and it affects everything in your whole image. Selectively means it's only going to affect the area that you want. So if I wanted to selectively adjust, I could just do it on our head. I would make an adjustment and it would just affect this area nowhere else. What we're gonna take a look at first is our global adjustments. Usually you're gonna do your global adjustments first and then we're gonna go into our selective adjustments. The key with global adjustments are, you don't wanna make one area look better and another area look worse. If you do that, do not do anything because that means that you need to do it selectively. In photography and in editing any sort of an image, 75% of your adjustments are gonna be selective. Only a minor amount are going to be global. The first thing we're gonna do in 
any image is to white balance our image. That's to get the color balance right. So in this image, it's very yellow. It doesn't look very good. So we're going to adjust that. We have a couple of different ways that we can work on our image. Right here, we have something called Adobe Color. This is what I have set, but you could import your own camera profiles if you wanted. In general, I just work on these. And what these do is change the base configuration of way, the way it looks. So Adobe Color is standard. If you go to Landscape, it's going to increase the color and contrast a little bit more. If you go to portrait or standard, to me, they both look exactly the same. They're going to desaturate, flatten your image a little bit, and then vivid is going to do what it says, make everything very vivid and contrasty. I do not like vivid or landscape. I pretty much use either Adobe Color or standard or portrait. We're going to go ahead and start off with color just to keep it simple. The next step is to set our white balance. Now we have a little white balance picker here. I never use it, but what you could do is click on it and then you could set this and it will try to white balance your image. Now you can see it didn't do a very good job because when you use this white balance, it's trying to set a neutral gray. So in this image, do we have a neutral gray? Well, we could, so we could click on this and you could see, yeah, that didn't do very good. I can click on it again. I can try to click out here and it's not gonna know what to do. In general, this little dropper here, completely useless unless you shot on a neutral background and the lighting was at 6,500 Kelvin. There's a lot of stuff that screws this up. I do not find it useful. What I do find useful is this drop down menu that we see right here. So we can go to how it was shot and then you'll see some options. We've got auto, daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, and custom. On most cameras, these are your white balance settings. So we can toggle through them. So we can go to auto and it will try to auto do it. Didn't do a very good job. We can go to daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluorescent, flash. And custom is gonna be whenever you slide these sliders. So if I went to auto, and I wanted to warm it up and I slide this, notice it goes to custom because now I'm doing a custom configuration. So in this image, I'm gonna say, okay, that's exactly how I want it. That's the color balance that I saw when I took this photo. So how did I get to that? Let's go back up here to as shot. So I went to auto and auto was too cool. So then I went to the sliders. So we have a temperature slider that we have right here and a tint. Most of the time, you're only going to be using the temperature slider. Very rarely that you use tint. So in that case, I wanted to warm my photo up. And you'll notice it's blue over here and yellow over here, magenta over here, green over there. So when you slide the slider this way, it's going to become more warm or more yellow. So I'm just adding some of that back because it didn't get it exactly right. Do I want to add tint? No, I'm going to leave it where it was. So I'm trying to get an accurate color balance of what I thought I saw. I'm actually going to do this a little bit more. I didn't actually take this photo, so I don't know what it actually looked like. But this looks pretty good to me. The next thing that we have down here is tone. And you'll notice there's auto here, meaning if I click on this, it's automatically going to tone this image as how it thinks it should look. Remember, how it, meaning the program, thinks it should look. This is what I call wild swings, meaning you have all these sliders doing all these crazy things. That's not usually a good sign, meaning that that's probably not a good adjustment of this image. Usually you want few minor slider adjustments, not these wild swings. So what I will do in this case is I'm going to hold my option key. And when I hold option, notice this is tone, hold option. It says reset tone. So I'm going to click that and go back to there. If you are using a PC, that would be the Alt key, not the Option key. So now I've reset this back. Now I'm looking at my image and what do I want to adjust? Well, let's say I want to open up my shadows a little bit. I can just slide this this way to open up my shadow. My exposure looks pretty good. There's no area where it's like super bright except for here. 
but I don't want to fix this because it's a non-important area of the image and eventually I'll probably crop that out. But everything else looks pretty good. So my highlights, I don't think I need to adjust. My whites don't need to adjust. Everything is looking pretty good globally because I don't want to brighten her face up because it's going to make her arms too bright. I might want to bring her arms down or darker a little bit, but we're just going to leave it as is because I don't want to actually darken her face anymore. So remember those crazy swings we had? This is eventually what I did. And what I'm trying to do when I make a global adjustment is just improve the toning a little bit, trying to get it a little more accurate. We can go in with the selective adjustments later to get them into a better spot. Down here, people love to use these where we've got texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance, and saturation. I do not use them at all. I don't even know why this vibrance is here. So we're gonna dial that out. And the reason is I can do this in Photoshop and it's a better spot to adjust this because some of these things like clarity are sharpening and increasing the contrast. This is something we want to do at the end of the process, not at the beginning. I don't want to sharpen my image at all. Sharpening is dependent on the output size. So if you change the output size, you can end up with an over sharpen or an under sharpen image. It's just not an intelligent way to work. You want to do this towards the end. And we'll see that when we go to Photoshop. The reason being this be a Lightroom to Photoshop tutorial. I'm, I'm going to explain to you what I do in Lightroom and what I do in Photoshop. There is a tone curve. And so I could work a curve just like I could in Photoshop, but sliding these sliders is doing the exact same thing. So we're not going to use that. Down here, we have some color sliders, and I do use these to more accurately fix things. So in this image, you notice we've got a lot of cyan and blue here, 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 here. And there's really no cyan anywhere else in the image. Remember, these are global adjustments. So if I go to saturation, I can actually suck out that blue that we see in the image that really isn't there. It just has to do with the color balance in the shadow areas of this image. So I can reduce that to make it look more accurate. Now we'll go into more in depth of using HSL color later. There's also color grading, detail, which is sharpening, lens correction, transform. We have some effects and calibration. For right now, we're not gonna take a look at this stuff because truthfully, most of what you're gonna be doing is not any of this stuff. So we're gonna keep it simple for today. We're just looking at global adjustments, trying to make this better. And so we took out some blue and we adjusted this right here, more accurate. The next step is to go in and make a selective adjustment. And selective adjustments can be really, really complicated. So the next step is to make a selective adjustments. And selective adjustments, in my opinion, are really the key to good editing or toning in photography. And the way we do that is new. We come over here to the symbol, and the symbol looks like a circle with dots around it. And that is going to be our masking inside of Lightroom. They switched from an adjustment brush to masking a couple years ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it's gonna bring up this weird set of options here. Inside of this, we have something called subject where it's going to select the subject. And all of these are using AI, artificial intelligence to make those selections. We have the ability to do sky. We don't really have a sky in this, so that's not gonna be helpful. Or the background. We also can select objects, meaning it could, if we had a series of plates, we could get it to select those objects and we'll take a look at that. We have a brush where we can manually apply where we want it to select. We have a linear gradient, a radial gradient and by color range. And the last one, which is down here, you see it's a little picture of this person here. We can have it select people. So if we had multiple people in an image, 
you would see a picture of this person, then another one of the next person, another one of the next person. And we'll take a look at that later. Right now, we're just going to stick with this image and how we're going to apply it. Now, in this image, even though we could select a person, I don't want to use that in this case because all I want to do is darken the arms and maybe right here, the midsection in this image. So I'm going to do that with simply by using the brush out here next to the brush. You'll notice that there is a letter K that is the quick key to do this. So I could just hit the letter K on my keyboard and it'll bring up the brush. In this case, we're going to click on it and we get this new set of windows. So we get our adjustments back, but we get this thing called mask. And this is really the key to understanding how Photoshop and Lightroom work. It's using a mask to either hide or show an area. So what we're gonna do in this case is I've got my brush and let's say I wanted to just apply it to the arms. I'm gonna paint this a red and it could be any color in the areas that I want to make the adjustment in. So I'm just saying, hey, where this red is, that's where I want it to adjust. Right here is that red color. You wanted to pick blue, you could make it blue. You wanted to make it green, you could make it green. In this case, we'll just make it red and leave it at that. So right now, this is the mask is just the area that we're going to apply the adjustment to. And I just did this very crudely, not accurately. So if I come over here now and I make the adjustment, you see it's only applying those areas. Now I make doing a horrible adjustment so you can see what's going on. So we're saying, hey, I just want to affect that area. So in this case, I could just darken a little bit and bam, we're good to go. Okay. If I wanted to warm this image up, I could come over here and just kind of warm this up. So we get in more exact color as to her face. And then if we come up here, we'll see these little white squiggly lines, which are hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this view. So I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna go white on black, and we can see that. This is what that mask looked like. So this was the arms and this was her belly, all right? So the white areas are where we're going to show the effect, and the effect was the darkening. And the black areas is where it's not gonna to happen to anything. So the way black and white works is, black hides the adjustment, and white either reveals or shows the adjustment. So if I was to literally come in here and white in this area and then go back to that overlay mode when I make this adjustment it would actually happen up here because I've applied it into the mask now if I decide that I don't want it up here we can simply come up here to subtract by what method the brush I can come in here I can paint black and it will remove that from the area Add, if I wanted to add this to a new location, I could hit add, brush, and here, and I could add it to that location if that's what I wanted. I don't, so I'm gonna hit subtract, brush, and we're gonna go ahead and remove that. So what I want you to do, and look, I'm not gonna finish the tutorial today and all these different adjustments. I want you to make some global adjustments. The next step is I want you to learn how to do a selective adjustment. So you come up here to masking, hit brush into an area. If you wanna change the size of your brush, here's the slider for the size and the feather. The way feather works is if you have it all the way down, when you do this, you're gonna get a hard edge. Notice that hard edge. And if I make an adjustment, it's gonna give me a hard edge, which is usually not what you want in photography. If you change your feather up high, it's gonna give you a soft edge. So when you make that adjustment, it's gonna be softer on that edge. So in my case, I think to start off, just make that about 50%, you're gonna be good to go. Flow should be all the way up, density should be all the way up. And just learn how to paint or apply an area and then add that mask, right? That's all you need to do. Do it over and over and over until you understand how it works, and then we're gonna move on. So practice your global adjustments, making a selective adjustment, understand the basics of how it works, and then, and then we'll go into more in depth of how to make more complicated masks and multiple masks and things like that 
in the next video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.